My name is Noah Fisher. I'm a member of Occupy Museums. So I'll start with um, an Occupy Wall Street style question. Why have the 1% always cared so much about art? Why have the Vanderbilts amassed, amassed big art collections and built museums like this? What's up with art and the mega rich? And what does this have to do with fracked gas and pipelines and climate change? Well, a long time ago, artists were in charge of making effigies and statues and holy depictions of gods and spirits in heaven and hell. And patrons realized that uh, by supporting the arts, they could get themselves painted into heaven. Well, today, the museum is not so much prized for its religious content, but for its creativity, genius, and the ultimate embodiment of individuality and democracy. Still today, we can say the museums are actually temples, and they do stand for our highest values. And that's why they draw near to them those that need the credibility the most. People like David Koch, who sits on the board of three New York City museums, the Triple Crown. And uh, that's how Koch gets to be a prominent citizen instead of a pariah, even while undermining the country's democracy and denying climate change and profiting from it. But here we have a museum built in our own day, and things have gotten even worse. Because what's happening with the world's newest museums is that these are institutions that reflect the age of hyper-capitalism. These newest museums cannot help but canonize dystopia. And we see, for example, the new Guggenheim in Abu Dhabi that some of you have been following, called on an uh, island called the Island of Happiness, which is uh, built by workers who are basically in 21st century slave bondage. And then we have the Whitney Museum, the new Whitney Museum. We have literally a museum with fracking infrastructure in its basement. You could say that indeed museums are temples of truth because they reflect the destructive policies of the 1% and what's actually going on in the world. And you could say that's just how the world is. But I think that's the wrong way to look at it because it reifies the 1% and it reifies the way things are in a way that we cannot sustain. As if the 1% really are gods. Because as art lovers and artists, we are the ones who have always given life to culture and to art and to, the, and to some of the gods. And it's time to put our creativity toward conjuring the gods that are more important, such as the muses of climate sanity, the angels of social, economic, and racial equality, the spirits of rebellion against the deadly status quo.